Okay, so this is the next video in probability distributions, and we're now looking at the Poisson distribution. Now, much the same as with the binomial distribution, there are four conditions for the Poisson distribution, and they are different, so you must learn them because they don't appear on the formula sheet. So the first one is that events happen at random, and that might seem like such an obvious one, but it's not. Okay, so the events have to happen at random. The second condition is events cannot happen at the same time. So, you know, they can't happen simultaneously. The third condition is each event is independent. And I've done those three first because the fourth condition is a bit of a doozy. And that is the average number of events that happen is proportional to a time interval or area. And that kind of gives you a huge clue about what the Poisson distribution is about. It's about time intervals and areas. And it also tells you an average. Now, the difference between the Poisson and the normal distribution is they don't tell you a standard deviation with the Poisson. Generally, they will tell you just the average number of events. So the other thing that's different for the Poisson distribution is the Poisson distribution is about discrete numbers. So it's about a number of events that happens. That's a whole number, whereas the normal distribution is a continuous distribution. OK, so those are my four conditions, and we'll talk a bit more about that last one in a minute. However, let's move on. So the formula for Poisson distribution is this one. OK, uh, to talk you through this, the probability of x equals a is e to the minus lambda. Lambda to the power of a divided by a factorial, and that is when lambda is the average number of events. Lambda is an upside down y. And A is the number of successes. OK, again, I've slightly rewritten it from the one that you'll find in your formula sheet. So you need to look at that formula sheet and check. Now, the other conditions that we told you about last time when we got to this point was we were talking about uh, the mean and the standard variance and the standard deviation. So the mean is lambda because that's the average number of events. But remember, there's a time interval in there. So sometimes they can scale that time up and down. You have to take that into account. The other variable is the variance, is lambda. So that makes the standard deviation the square root of lambda. All good. Right, so the last time when I did this for the binomial, we then had a look at a question. So outside school, in one hour period, we counted 240 cars traveling by towards the roundabout. Find the probability. So let's think about this. Cars driving past a school, it, does that happen at random? Yes. Does it happen simultaneously? Now, you can't have two cars drive past at the same time because it's a single lane of road. And if there are two driving past each other at the same time, one of them's a Muppet. Uh, the third one is that uh, events are independent. So the fact that the last car drove past doesn't affect the next car driving past the interval is going to change. And the last one is that the number of cars driving past is proportional to the time interval. I had 240 drive past in an hour. So in two hours, I'd expect 480 to drive past. That's proportional. And in half an hour, I'd expect 120 to drive past. And in 10 minutes, I'd expect 40 to drive past. So depending on how big my time interval is, the number of cars changes. That's what I meant by proportional. OK? The last thing we need to talk about is using your calculator. So if I am told that x equals a number, so x equals 5 or x equals 10, I'm going to do the Poisson PDF. My first variable or my first part in my Poisson PDF is lambda, and the second value is the one I want to find out. And much the same as when we did the binomial. All of these less than and greater than, you need to read through. And there's a sheet to help you understand those on the conference okay but the main thing is that as you go through these if it's less than a you've got to know that it's not it's got to be less than or equal to on your calculator so the Poisson CDF is the variable which you use on your calculator to work these out and it has to be a less than or equal to cool next video we're going to actually answer some of the same questions we just looked at and hopefully you'll get a bit more of the idea about the Poisson. Now, when I did those last time, I found that I thought probably should have actually put this in so that you could actually see it. So those are the same thing we just talked about, but with some numbers, not with letters. See you next time.